Hello and welcome to Insider Outsider, an Atta Galata presentation where we speak to authors of Indian descent who live and work across the globe. It gives me great pleasure to welcome Dr. Priya Subramanian, who lives in California and writes about the Indian condition. Welcome to our show, Priya. Hi, Nandita. Thanks for that warm welcome. And uh, thank you to Atta Galata for including me in this edition of uh, Insider Outsider. I am very curious about why you chose Bangalore as the location of your fictional work. And how has that been received by your friends and peers in the United States? Why Bangalore? That's an easy question to answer. I grew up in Bangalore. Uh, I lived there until I turned about 17 when I left. And so it's a world I know really well and a world that I was happy to return to. And it really sustained me uh, throughout the writing of a novel. The novel took a very long time. And one of the things that kept me going was the kind of joy that I would feel uh, just imagining the streets of Bangalore and um, uh, remembering uh, the places and the people that I knew there, all of whom kind of made their way into my novel in various different forms. Uh, so, so it was a joy. Um, and also the, the best place that, the place that I knew best in the world. So um, it was an obvious choice for me. As far as what my friends uh, think about the novel and the setting, uh, if I can speak for them, I'll say they've all been uniformly appreciative and supportive. And I think they've enjoyed getting to know Bangalore through my eyes. Um, as a reader myself, you know, I'm happiest when I'm encountering worlds that I haven't experienced in real life. Uh, it adds to the joy of the work. And um, uh, I would uh, venture to guess that that's what they feel also. How does a busy specialist find time to write fiction? And how have your experiences in India and the US sustained and informed this desire? So I get asked this question about being a busy specialist and writing a lot. And um, uh, I have to say in all honesty that it was probably no easier or no more difficult than um, writing with any um, day job that most writers have, um, you know, it does take a lot of discipline um, and the ability to kind of clear your mind for a few hours of anything else that may be um, kind of weighing on you or bothering you. And I think that in that way, I think writing was a, was a release for me where I could you know, leave a world that was sometimes, um, that felt sometimes out of control and go into a place where I was truly in control of what happened. And uh, uh, so for me, writing was kind of a, a therapy, a catharsis. And so uh, writing was the most joyful thing that I could do. It did take a lot of discipline, um, uh, which, you know, meant that I had to set aside time, every bit of time that I could spare uh, to work on this novel that I sometimes thought was never going to end or see the light of day. Um, but I think that's true for most aspiring writers who have um, jobs that, uh, you know, sustain their regular lives. Um, and as far as, you know, how my experiences in India or America have uh, have uh, sustained this, um, I have to say in America, I was uh, lucky to have um, a lot of support from friends and peers and writing workshops and teachers who were generous with their feedback and praise and criticism. So uh, that sustained me uh, through the way. Um, it was also... Um, you know, going back to India every so often uh, kind of uh, refreshed um, my perspectives about 
about the place that I grew up in, in that each time I returned, I would see it with new eyes, which I think most immigrants will relate to. It's that um, it's that real insider outsider perspective. So you so you understand the world both as the world that you grew up in and as someone who's returning after a while who sees at least some things as new. Um, and I, I think those experiences did enrich my writing. Tell me, Priya, of your experiences as a published author. You know, it's always a, a seismic change uh, from being an aspiring writer uh, to a published author. And, um, uh, you know, it was no different for me. What makes it even more remarkable is that this it happened this year in 2020 with uh, a raging pandemic and all our lockdowns. Uh, I have to say I was very lucky um, because the book came out in January of 2020. And um, Westland, who published The Alchemy of Secrets, uh, was really supportive. Um, and they had uh, helped organize a Seven City Book Tour in India right when the book came out. So I spent, uh, I think it was six weeks in India where I was going from place to place and multiple literary festivals and talking to people about the book. And it was truly a dream come true. Actually, uh, something that I didn't know that I could dream of that came true. So uh, that was phenomenal. And I count myself especially lucky because if the book had come even um, a month or two afterwards, it would have been right in the middle of the lockdown. And I'm sure it would have sunk without a trace. Um, So I'm especially grateful for the way that things lined up and also for all the people who, despite the pandemic and their many worries and real worries, uh, you know, were able to read the book. and, And not only did they read it, but they were... Um, so appreciative and, um, you know, supportive of it. I think it's really word of mouth that has sustained my debut novel. Um, I'm a, I'm an unknown author and, uh, um, you know, I'm, I'm just incredibly grateful for, uh, everything that happened despite, you know, all the uh, difficulties that this year has posed. What sustains your soul and your writerly cravings in the US. What sustains my soul and writerly creativity? That's a very difficult question, Nandita, but I'll try. Um, I think, you know, the things that sustain my soul outside of writing, like most people are, um, you know, friends, family, love. I, I think I'm truly happy in the company of, or at least when I'm interacting with uh, with people that I know and love. <laughs> and I felt that especially so this year with all our enforced separations. Um, and, you know, a- aside from that basic uh, uh, sense of personhood, I think, um, you know, I'm sustained by beautiful writing. Um, anybody who... who um, who writes well, I'm a slave to, and, uh, uh, you know, great music and beautiful sunsets and, and, and just beauty in the world. I, I think, um, I, you know, I think it's that beauty that, that, uh, sustains me and, and gives me joy and solace when, when, uh, sometimes things are difficult. So I, you know, I would have to say, thinking about this for the first time, that it's probably the beauty in the world that sustains my soul. Um, uh, and, um, you know, as far as writerly cravings, um, I really, w- you know, uh, this is another thing I've learned during the writing of the novel and the pandemic. What I really crave is just some silence and, and a house where I can't hear the sound of anyone else moving or breathing to be able to write. Um, I'm, I'm, I say that uh, jokingly, you know, I'm, I'm happy to, to have, um, you know, my family close to me, but um, um, I think what helps uh, my writing is to have that sense of separation and, and the, the feeling of being alone with the page. To end with, please tell us more about your books and what you hope to achieve through them. Thank you. Thank you, Nandita, for asking about my book, The Alchemy of Secrets. Uh, It's my debut novel set in Bangalore, as we discussed. And the story is of 24-year-old Mira, who now lives in the U.S., who returns to Bangalore at 
the news that her grandmother is dying. And in the process, uh, you know, she uncovers the secret that's deeply held at the heart of their family. And in doing so, uh, her perspective of the entire world changes. And that, in a nutshell, is the book. Um, People have told me that they find it a little bit of a page turner. There's a sense of suspense that impels the plot. Um, and I hope that, you know, any reader who picks up the book is um, is given hours of reading pleasure <laughs> at, it, at, its, at, at its most basic. Uh, but I have to say that the book is also about things like caste and prejudice and uh, uh, old fashioned things like communal harmony. Um, you know, one of the one of uh, Mira's best friends is Anisa, who's Muslim, and uh, and you know the book is set in the in the aftermath of the Babri Masjid demolition, and so it does come with a certain uh, perspective um, of 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 just wanting us all to kind of live together in harmony the way I think, maybe with nostalgia-tinged um, vision that uh, things used to be in India. Um, so that is my hope and it, you know that this book does whatever little bit it can towards promoting the idea that we're all human beings um, who can live together uh, and love each other. Um, that would be kind of my deepest desire for the book. I found this session extremely entertaining and enlightening. Thank you for being with us, Dr. Priya. Thank you, Atta Galata, for giving me this opportunity. And thank you, friends, for watching. More books and more authors soon. See you then. Bye.